Jerry Yang is here. He is co-founder of Yahoo Incorporated. It began in 1994 as a search engine for the World Wide Web. It has evolved into much, much more. Today, it is one of the most recognized brand names on the Internet. It has the world's largest web audience with the most users and the most traffic. This Wall Street favorite is one of the few Internet companies to actually make money. It continues to expand its portal to offer a variety of services and become the first and last stop on the web. Joining me now, Internet visionary, self-titled Chief Yahoo, Jerry Yang. I'm pleased to have him on this broadcast. Welcome Thanks to the program. Me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I just found out the best thing I've learned about you all day. You're a huge college basketball yes, fan. Yes, yes, yes. A big all, Stanford fan, Pac-10. Pac-10 <laughs> and Stanford fan. You go to the Stanford game? Yes, yes. And you are here to say that you are recognizing that the Duke Blue Devils this year <laughs> are the class of the country. Well, they, they're certainly going to be hard to beat. Yeah. Tremendous. You think Stanford will make it to the Final Four? I, I think I think the uh, expectation built from last year is that they at least make it to that, and, and who yeah. knows? You know, it's yeah. it's going to take a bit who of luck exactly, of the draw. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the year, I was there the year that they said that um, that UNLV could not lose, yeah. and they they lost to Duke in the semifinals. And I mean, I I can't. Im we just got very very lucky. Well, it, it's it's certainly the luck of the draw, and how they get matched up. So, yeah. will you go to the Final Four? I, I I'm. I'm a, a huge fan. If I can, you know, swing, swindle my way there, I will find a way now, to get there. Come on, let's, let's get this straight. All right. <laughs> I mean, you, you are worth billions now. Yes. Um, you ought to at least allow in your life some pleasures, and one of the pleasures would be to go to the Final Four. Well, last year when the Stanford was playing the Final Four, I watched it from Beijing. So I tell you, God knows where I'll be this time around. <laughs> they let you in Beijing? They, yeah, they let me in Beijing, and they yeah. actually have ESPN on, on, the, on the hotel. Is that there. right? So, so you watched it from Beijing? Yeah, and it was a heartbreaker. As, as you may recall, we lost by one point or something. Yeah. It was terrible. I forgot. You lost to Utah? Who did you lose to? We lost to Utah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, how much of your day do you spend thinking about business and not about basketball or entertainment or anything else? Well, you know, I tell you, Yahoo has become such a big part of my life. I mean, it was something that we did almost as a, as a hobby for so long that it's hard to distinguish between work and, and not work. And uh, having just been living and breathing Yahoo for four years, you know, my wife always feels like I'm, I'm synonymous with work. <laughs> so it is, it is quite a bit of time. I mean, you know, you're, you're connected all the time and you're, you're on email all the time and it's all, always about work. But when you do something that you love, it's it doesn't feel like work, you know, and it feels more about, hey, how do I get to something that I'm really excited about and do more about it? So probably, you know, most waking moments other than stand, sitting in the Stanford basketball game, I do t tend to think about something about work. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the beginning. I mean, you were a graduate student at Stanford. I mean, how did this company come into being? Well, it, it is, as with a lot of other things, you know, you, you were in the right, we were in the right place in the right time. I, I, my partner, David Philo, and I were doing our PhDs at Stanford in something completely unrelated. We we're trying to design chip software, chip design software at the time for our PhD thesis. And we had no idea that the internet was something that A, was commercializable, and B, was ever going to take off like it has. So we started to just really to mess around on the internet to create a directory um, of websites that we, we enjoyed and we wanted other people to enjoy it. And before we knew it, in 1994, uh, we started out with a couple hundred of websites, grew that to a few thousand to hundred thousands. And the population that started using our directory grew as well. And we never thought it was going to make any money. We never thought even turning into a business. What was the name of the original website? What was it? Well, it was uh, Jerry's, David and Jerry's Guide to the World Wide Web. Yeah, right. And uh, I'm sure glad we didn't keep that name. <laughs> <laughs> and we, in fact, we got so tired of typing it because yeah. it was so long. And was, we had corresponding email with all of our users that we, David said, hey, let's find a shorter name. Yeah. And Yahoo... Um, fit perfectly because, as you know, it means somebody who's very rude and uncivilized. No, what was the original word? What well, Yahoo stands for what in the beginning? Um, Yahoo stood for yet another hierarchical, officious oracle. <laughs> and um, we obviously found the word first and then fit the acronym later. So. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you do that? You, you yeah, thought Yahoo was word. a great word. Let's right. figure out yeah. what yeah. it stands for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, in 1994, then... You put the list together, and that's when you really formed Yahoo. Right, and then we started as a business uh, through some venture capital in March of 1995, almost exactly five year, uh, four years ago today. So, and what did you um, say to those venture capitalists when you went out to see them? Well, you know, it was a very interesting time because I this think this is of, five years ago, four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah, and, and it was a very interesting time because there were no, there was, you know, Netscape had, had got funded, and it was the hottest story in the, in the valley, and. And other venture capitalists were looking for the next internet thing, not knowing what the internet thing was. 
And we had a, a reasonably trafficked product, a service called Yahoo Directory, yeah. but had no business model. And what people would, just for those who don't know your story and don't know that much about the internet, what were you doing at that time? People would come to you for what? We are essentially like a yellow pages or a white pages on the internet. So if you were looking for any subject area about anything, you go to Yahoo, we have a directory that guides you, or you can type a keyword and search for it. And we weren't obviously the only one. We weren't, you know, we were, we were one of many that were out there. But uh, the interesting thing back then was, okay, you have hundreds of thousands of people using this, you have a catchy name, how are you going to make money from all this? And that was when we started to say, hey, we can't keep doing this for free, at least we we, we were spending 20, 25, uh, 20, 23 hours 25 a day. Hours 25 a day, hours a day. They felt like 25 <laughs> hours. Uh, In fact, he was sleeping at the office. <laughs> yeah, David and I were, you know, sharing a sleeping bag. Not at the same time, of course. Yeah. You know, he would work and I would, I would, I would <laughs> sleep and he, he would sleep and I would work. So, but, the, you know, the, the, the big conversation with the venture capitalists was how do you take this into a model that starts to also have a business model and continues to get the users that, that come Well, AOL was still there, wasn't it? I mean, oh, yeah, AOL. But, but why couldn't you just say we're going to be better than AOL? It was a very interesting conversation. It's the same idea. I think it's very similar, which is you want to be a starting point on the Internet for people. Um, but AOL also has a very uh, interesting business model, which is they used a subscriber online service kind of relationship. Ours was that no matter how you got on the Internet, in fact, we don't control that piece of it, right. you use us as a big website. So and as long as you have internet access, you can get on Yahoo. You don't, you don't pay us for that access. In fact, you use Yahoo for free. And that was sort of the breakthrough where you are giving this thing away for free. How are you going to make money? And that's where you know, the media idea of advertising and marketing and promotions came, came, to, came to mind. Is that going to be a viable idea? I'm going to come more to your story. But is the idea of being supported by advertising revenue going to be the viable idea for the future? Well, you know, Four years ago when we started, we, we, we kind of took a, a, a very general approach and said, well, you know, how, how much can advertising be and, and, and how fast will that grow? And if you look at even if 1% if of the um, overall advertising dollars uh, went from the traditional media over to the Internet media, that's a $2 billion industry. And if you went to 10%, it's a $20 billion industry. So clearly, if we can make the idea of interactive marketing, interactive advertising work, then on, we only have to take a very small percentage to make it a very large industry. And what has happened since is not only has interactive marketing really taken off, all the forecasts that we made were under, underestimating the real potential, actually the real actual dollar spent, but the, the, the advent of electronic commerce in the last couple of years where you know, not only do you advertise products and, and, and market products, you can also actually do physical transactions over the internet. That really took off and uh, helped drive the entire industry. So if I want to buy a book from Amazon.com, and I find Amazon.com through you, you get a piece, you get paid by Amazon.com. Sure, and, and sometimes it works in an advertising kind of arrangement, so they pay to be in a certain place. Like Basically right now, if you search for any word on Yahoo, you'll see a little Amazon, do you want to buy a book on this topic? And, uh, and, and that's, that's the kind of distribution and marketing deals that we do for a lot of our merchants. Now, do you do also BarnesandNoble.com? We work with we work with a variety of people. In this case, you know, we we, we try to work with uh, more than one provider. Amazon tends to be one of our premier merchants. That means we do give Amazon a bit more, but that changes all the time in different categories. We work with multiple people. Uh, it just depends on the industry and depends on the number of uh, merchants that are out there. Back to starting this thing, it was in fact uh, as you started it. The the story is is that there was much more of a human dimension to what mm -hmm. Yahoo was doing. That you guys weren't actually saying we're faster, we're anything. You were saying that there is more selection here. We are doing this ourselves. This is not being done by some, you know, automaton. Right. I think one of the things that we've stuck to over the years is that there are, there was going to be, and there are always going to be tens, hundreds, you know, even billions of web pages and websites out there. And the question becomes not whether you can keep everything in one big database and search through them. The question becomes how can you help somebody who's looking for the right piece of information navigate through that. And our approach has always been not only aggregating websites into one big uh, directory, but also building that directory structure. So you can start at the entertainment directory and go down to subdirectories. And, and that directory was built through human knowledge. And we have people that are spending a lot of time on TV shows, the websites, with movie websites. And so you, you create a, an expertise that is built on human knowledge. 
uh, as well as technology. And, and a lot of people get the idea that we don't use any technology. In fact, we use a tremendous amount of technology to help us filter through it. But the final placement of any website or any content creating of directory is done by a human person. When you went to see the venture capital people, what was their reaction? Well, we um, clearly were showing that Yahoo could be something that is very popular. The question is, how do you make money? And so um, one of the things that most venture capitalists were looking at is, okay, can this advertising model work? Can you continue to give away your services for free and ask sponsors and corporate clients to pay for that? Um, and, and some of them were skeptical and others weren't. And uh, the, the venture capital firm that we eventually took our money from is called Sequoia Capital. They, they believed it, but they never made us present to their partners, thinking that it would, you know, we were probably a little too uh, rough around the edges to be presenting to the, to the partners. But, how uh, much money did they give you? They gave us a million dollars uh, to start for, and they, they, they took 25% of the company for that. Pretty good investment for them, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things where you look back and you say, gosh, you know, uh, they certainly got a great deal, but, but you know, at the time, if we didn't took, take the money, we would never be able to build a business. So it was a, it was a partnership that we entered into. That million dollars today is worth how much? Well, they've since obviously distributed their, their, their investments, but 25% of the company today would be you know, ten, you know, $8 billion or something like that. Uh, but they obviously don't have all $8 billion. They've already distributed it to their partners and things like that. And how did you and, and Jerry, I mean, how did you and your partner, David, split it up? Uh, we, um, you know, at the time of the fun funding of the venture capital, we each had 25% as well. So David and I had together 50% the venture capitalists at 25%, and we reserved the rest of 25% for our employees and management. Um, and it's a very popular thing to do in Silicon Valley to try to make sure that you get the best people uh, to join us, and, and that's incentivize them with, with a large piece of equity in our company. You really do have to be public and have to have an equity base to, to make it attractive to the people. I, absolutely. You when you look at our biggest challenge today, and certainly back then, was continue to hire great people. And uh, uh, to do that, you have to have an incentive structure that is based on stock options and, and uh, building up ownership in the company and uh, uh, making sure that you continue to be competitive, not only from a a, a, a what you provide benefits and compensation and work environment, but also there's upside to what they do. Are you stunned by the market cap today? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think that when you, when, you, when you look at companies like ours, we, we really are trying to build value over the long term. And that's been our story and that continues to be our story. And you can't but, uh, you know, sometimes stand back and say, wow, what is this market doing to the Internet stocks? Um, I think it's clearly reflecting where people believe the future will be. The question is, you know, how many of these companies that all, you know, as a whole sector have uh, very rich valuations, how many of us will continue to deliver that, those long-term promises? Do you worry seriously about the fact that Disney bought a portal, Diller bought a portal, and these are media companies that can advertise uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, 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 one of the big things I do is worry. <laughs> Being a founder is uh, 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 we're uniquely, uniquely qualified to be extremely paranoid and uh, think that everything we've built up today could be gone tomorrow, which uh, could be true. And certainly in this environment, we're so competitive. And one of our uh, biggest challenges going forward is not only the traditional competitors that we've had, like AOL and Excite and, and uh, in some extent Microsoft, but also um, this new emerging uh, categories in which traditional competitors are teaming up with large media companies. And that's something that, uh, on the one hand, does validate the fact that, you know, this is some place, this is a, this is a uh, uh, group of companies that need to play in the space, uh, but also it, it clearly it presents a different set of challenges. They have a lot deeper pockets, they have other ways of reaching consumers, and they have different offerings that we may or may not have in a, in a short period. Uh, so we continue to go back to our roots and focus on what does the Yahoo brand deliver for our users? How can we make that experience the best? And it, as long as we can continue to let people choose, hopefully we'll have a good uh, Let position. me stay with those two questions. Sure. We'll, we'll answer those two questions as you would answer them today. The branding and, yeah. and you know, the, the interesting thing about our business is that we don't, we live and die on the internet. And uh, we don't have to worry about whether we have a movie business and we, we don't have to worry about whether we have a TV business. Um, so, you know, everything that we do continues to revolve around the internet. And we want to be continue to push our brands towards something that's not this media brand that everybody kind of looks at and says, oh, yeah, I don't know what's going on. We want to make the Yahoo brand approachable 
uh, trustworthy and uh, personalizable. So your Yahoo experience may be different from mine, may be different from somebody else's. Um, it's going to be global. We're in 14 different countries uh, uh, and, and offices around the world. And localizing that, making Yahoo France and uniquely French kind of an experience and Yahoo Germany and German experience and Japan, et cetera. And so we've got a lot of work to do to make that a relationship brand that people can really count on for a good internet experience. As far as our product goes, you know, every time we, we sort of get faced with any sort of um, debate about what we do with a certain product or certain service, we go back to our users. We have so many users that have been with us for so long that provides us really our sounding board. And on the internet, the nice thing is you can try things out, and if it works, the people will come and stay, and if it doesn't, they go somewhere else. And as long as we continue to make sure that we respond to our users uh, in a very timely fashion and being creative at the same time, uh, we, we will do okay, and that's the key for, for building our company. Looking at it today as we speak, knowing things can change tomorrow or six months from now or two years from now, clearly, and especially in Internet years, do you expect to remain independent? Yeah, I, I think that um, as a company, we are at the stage where um, whether you look at market capitalization, you look at revenue, you look at distribution, um, we are a network. We are a global network of over 50 million people that uses our um, and, our, our and services. Few people that could afford to buy you. Well, that's that's part of the that's part of the equation. But you know, we always also have to remind people that we built our company based on partnerships. We've had very strategic investors, SoftBank from Japan. Uh, we built we had a long working relationship with Reuters. We build the company based on partnerships, and we continue to seek partnerships. Um, the question is, do you have to give up large pieces of equity? Do you have to take other pieces of equity from other people? Um, in order to capitalize on those, on those kinds of partnerships? The answer is maybe, maybe not. Clearly, some of our competitors have felt that in order for them to get to the next stage, they need to uh, combine with larger companies. Uh, in our case, uh, we can do one of three things. Do nothing. We can c acquire other companies, like we've done with our pending acquisition of GeoCities. And we can partner with other people, whether they become investors in us or buy us. Uh, those are all these options. So I think the independence question is not so much corporate structure but rather what do we do with our brand and whether our experience is independent. And that's the thing I focus on. Just to give this some context for the viewers at home, in terms of market capitalization, what do you rank in terms of, of domestic companies in the United States? Do you know? I have no idea. Well, Not something I focus on. But, okay, but you, you're, if you're $50 billion, is that what you no, said? No, we're probably about uh, 25, 25 25 billion, billion today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You paid for GeoCities what? About $4 billion. About $4 billion. Yeah. yeah. Plus or minus, I mean, depending on the price. Yeah. Yeah. How do you? What's the vision for where you want to take this company? Well, I I, I go back as to the some, chief Yahoo, <laughs> as you call yourself. Uh, well, by the way, we tried to come up with a more interesting title, but we figured that was something that that that, that was going to that was going to stick around. Yeah. Um, what, an important aspect of what we're trying to do is enable the average consumer to use the internet more effectively. So we do much less of trying to tell people what to do with the internet rather than give them the tools and give them the services and they go and create the experience themselves. And we're trying to do that through things like My Yahoo, which is a personalizable Yahoo, the Yahoo Finance, which is a customizable Yahoo finance, or, uh, finance and quote services experience. And the GeoCities acquisition um, is something that we want to really take the next step, which is you have all these nice content that people can produce. They can publish their websites for their families, put their photo albums. All these things are things that I think there's a huge demand for as the number of internet users increase, and we want to enable users. So I think I think the the philosophy for Yahoo is don't try to do everything by telling people what to do. In fact, try to enable them and be a facilitator so that they can find everything they need, find who they want to communicate to, and find things to buy. And make suggestions to them. Yeah, and it's kind of giving them giving them the availability of these things and, and let them choose for themselves. But you say that you are a network today. How many people watch? How many people? You know, dial into Yahoo. Yeah, we Hit. we it, it, the the, the metaphor week. is very broad, and, yeah. and you know we, we 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 consider them. We really view them as users. We use yeah. we we feel like you know maybe that's more overly technical, but I think they they do build an interactive experience with us. Um, and uh, you know we this is all really rough numbers, but we believe there's probably over 50 million people on a 30-day period around the world that use Yahoo in one way or not, whether they type in one keyword or use Yahoo five times a day. Um, and, 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 the, and, the, and the demographic is, is extremely diverse and it's extremely reflective of what this, who's on the internet today. Mm -hmm. When you look at the rest of the world, 
is their internet experience going to be dramatically different from the United States because they're going to take a certain leap to get there? It's an interesting question, and we spend a lot of time internationally as well. Um, I think, broadly speaking, in, in Europe, and especially in Western Europe, you're, gonna, you're beginning to see that um, the telecommunication industry becoming more and more deregulated and therefore more competitive, uh, making access more affordable to people. Um, I think each country and, each, and certainly the European Union will, will treat Internet somewhat differently than perhaps the United States treat it. Uh, and overall, our hope is that each country and each culture will develop their own Internet experience. More or less regulation? On, in, a, in, a, in other countries in terms of trying to regulate? I think you'll see a variety. I mean, certainly in, in Japan, for example, where we've, we've been for almost three years, uh, the regulatory pressures is, is very low. There's very little regulatory pressures. Whereas in China, you go across there and it's very heavily regulated. Uh, in Europe, I think there's going to be some privacy concerns, and that, that will be probably the central to, to a lot of the debate there. Uh, but as far as uh, other things, that there will be uh, relatively free in terms of publishing and, and censored and, and, and things like that. If you weren't in the Yahoo business, what would you like to be in? I mean, Me personally? Yeah, you personally. <laughs> in other words, what part of it excites you the most other than oh, wow. uh, having a significant equity position and being the leader of one of the primary portals? I, I tell you, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where so many of us, our colleagues and everybody who's been in there for a long time, we're doing this because we love to win. We're extremely competitive people. Uh, and we love, we're doing something that changes the world. And I think ultimately that's, that's why I get up every day and, and go to work. It's not because I own a big piece of the company. Um, so if I weren't doing this, I'd be doing something similar with those goals. And, and obviously technology is something that I have a little bit more background in. So it's usually how do I take a piece of technology and enable it so that people get a lot more value out of it. How is it changing the world? Well, as, you, as we sit back and start looking at our users and what they're using the web for, you're looking at three, four years ago when we started, people surfing around websites. I mean, right. literally hopping from one website, one website to the other and, and very little sort of um, uh, real productivity being done. And in fact, um, you know, people called the World Wide Web the World Wide Waste right. a, a while back. Uh, now I think you don't see... just a curiosity item. Yeah, it's a, it's a time waster, if you will. Right. Lately, you don't see that much as much anymore. And it's because most people now get on the web as they would use the phone. You know, they, they either use it to communicate, they use it, use it to conduct commerce, they use it to look up something, and it's very action and, 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 and result oriented. Right. Um, I think you're just beginning to see that and, and that's going to take a huge shift continuum going forward. And I think that's something that five, ten years from now, hopefully if we do all of our jobs right, um, you'd be doing things on the internet without even thinking about it as the internet. You know, it'll be so embedded in our lives and, and seamless, whether you're shopping for a home or getting an insurance or looking at a stock quote or checking your kid's school menu. All these things are, are enabled by the internet. Five years from now, people will primarily access the internet through a PC? Oh, that's a good question. I think the PC will continue. That's two good questions for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have a lot of good questions. I, I think that um, a PC will continue to be a, a very versatile device for people to interact with the Internet. There's no better device today that you can input data, that you can download data, you can look at things. But obviously, over time, as people have more and more communication devices, whether it's a page or a cell phone or anything else, uh, people will have to look at it as, can you bring the Internet experience onto some of these other devices? So the answer is yes, I think the PC will be a big part of it. But I wouldn't be surprised to see on televisions. I wouldn't be surprised to see on your pagers. I wouldn't be surprised to see on your microwave ovens. You know, all these things, anybody who can enable a device to be on the Internet can. But is somebody going to come along and, and, and have the equivalent of what Microsoft has with its operating system and in terms of its dominance of the PC market, come along and invent some way of access to the Internet? I mean, whether it's some variation of whatever kind of software. I mean, do you expect that? Is, does your sense of the technology history tell you that? Yeah, I think that w the, the technology history tells us that if it's an open architecture, that somebody all knows how to communicate over, it's not a proprietary thing. And uh, if there's innovation, meaning market-driven innovation, you're going to get creative ideas. There's probably a hundred uh, uh, startups in the valley right now as we speak, or, or a thousand around the world that are trying to tackle that exact problem. One, someone will make it, someone won't. How to create a means to access the Internet that's new and different and easy. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and you know, I mean, the biggest complaint about the internet right today is still not easy enough, despite all the billions of dollars being spent on it. It's still not affordable enough in some ways. And people are coming up with great ideas all the time, giving away PCs for free, giving them internet connectivity for free, building up new uh, technology that helps that uh, wireless or mobile. All these things, I think, will create a very, very dynamic marketplace. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing for us is, is as long as the consumers can choose, what the best solutions out there. As long as they're not, they don't have to be locked into one or the other, or they only have one choice, uh, it's a great marketplace, and that's how this industry has grown. People believe that portals, that there'll be a giant sort of battle, and we'll end up with three or four. Do you believe that, or you think it'll be more? I, and of which most people would think that Yahoo would be one of them. You know, we, we have to be playing to be number one. <laughs> you know, playing for number two is, 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 is not a lot of fun, and it's a different game. Right. Um, I, I do think that, you know, as people, as I mentioned before, as their behavior continues to change on the Internet, and it does become more and more personalized and does become more and more relationship-driven, then you try to examine how many relationships does an average user want to have. Um, do you want to have one relationship, two relationships, ten relationships with, you know, somebody that keeps track of your stock? and your email and your chat and your buddies and those things and tend your to... your answer to that is what? Well, no. I think there's, there's probably fewer rather than more. You right. probably don't want 10 different IDs on 10 different systems. You probably want one or two integrated places where you can get a lot of stuff done and where your friends are. So, Boy, that gives you a huge future if that's the way it that's is. If you're way, number one at that, then you are... Well, you, you know... You haven't even begun to know how rich you're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't quite look at it that way, but I no, do, no, but, I do but, look at it as, as, but it's true, as, the, though. It's as true. the value proposition right. that we can, we can afford to bring. You, and just forget you and how much money right. you'll be worth. The value of Yahoo as a company, if that's true, if you're going to be number one and you believe as a part of that, that in the future more and more people are going to have, want to have one or maybe two places to go right. for access, for finance, for access, for shopping, for access, for entertainment, for yes. access, for information. Yeah, you, you basically, you're right, and, and we're not going to get everybody, we're not going to be able to offer the best thing for every category, and part of our job continues to be, if we don't give it to you, we're going to help you find it elsewhere, yeah. uh, but hopefully that relationship that people build with us is the key to our growth, um, and uh, you know, whether there's one, two, or three, or four, or ten of us, as long as we get a good, reasonable market share, I think that's, that's what we're looking at. How many hours per week do you surf? Well, I'm on the internet. Probably seventy hours a week. I mean, you know, 70. it's just it's how many just, hours today? So far well, today, today we're taping this at noon. Do you spend any time on? Wait, yeah, wait. I've probably been online for a couple of hours. Already? Morning. Yeah. You've been on well, a couple email hours already. Email and instant messaging and and, and checking uh, the website and, and and making sure that the market, getting the news. You know, it's 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 literally, you know, certainly at work it's always on, and in the future it'll always be on everywhere, and you just. You're, 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 you're doing most of your, you know, I, I spend much more time communicating through the Internet than on the phone. In terms of where, I mean, as you pointed out, the market capitalization of companies like Yahoo and Amazon.com and lots of other companies is really a result of people betting on the future. Sure. Right? Tell me about the future as you see it. I mean, how is it going to be different and, and what's going to change and what excites you about it? Well, I think that um, clearly what we have seen in the last couple of years signifies more of a fundamental shift in, in many businesses, the way they do business. And it is from that perspective that I look at the potential for our industry and forget about individual companies because I, I, I think that, you know, if you believe in industry, then there are going to be winners and losers and the winners are going to win big. But if you look at um, how many industries have decided and, and looked at the Internet as a key element of their future, it's astounding. You know, it started with the financial services and, and the brokerages, and you look at the computer industry itself, uh, being able to now sell goods through the internet is a big part of a lot of people's strategies. Um, telecommunication companies, uh, what happens when you have voice over the internet? Uh, what does that do to the long distance industry? Uh, retail. Well, we'll answer that. What do you think it does to the long distance industry? Well, I think it puts, uh, you know, I think the, 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 it is going to force, I think, a lot more companies to think about how the traditional business is run. And if, if the internet, voice over internet can be a, 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 a more cost-effective way of delivering voice data and data, you're going to have an uh, uh, interesting scenario in which the traditional long distance 
geography bound kinds of things don't work anymore yeah. and people have to respond to that and I think companies are uh, but you know books auto music uh, you know when streaming and broadband comes along you you how do you how you display movies all these things I think are becoming uh, entertainment uh, please tell me when that's gonna happen <laughs> well I'm you know I'm not I'm not one of those people that, that sit around and says hey you know video on demand is gonna happen I think there's gonna be plenty of things that are more useful today uh, without having the super high bandwidth, paying your bills on the internet, um, uh, being able to uh, communicate, all these things I think are uh, a, a hint of what could continue to be, happen in the future. Um, the biggest thing for us has to be that creating an, uh, a market driven environment um, that, that, that continues to be, uh, you know, hopefully relatively regulation free, uh, because it's one of those things where that has enabled the growth of this. Um, but uh, uh, to me, it's 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 it is what's the future that excites us. We're sort of on the bottom of the uh, third inning, and it's, it's still a long ball game. So, the internet in t five years will be as ubiquitous in the home as the telephone and the television is today. Yes, I, I think so. I think certainly in 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 in, in places like in the United States, where uh, the the ground I mean the groundwork has been set, the affordability continues to be one of those things that people need to examine uh, but you know c clearly uh, the technology is there and hopefully that uh, the, the the solutions that people need to get on the internet becomes cheap enough so that it's affordable what do you think you owe other than to build a great company I mean what dry, what sense of responsibility do you have beyond that well, it, it's a uh, it's a pretty big responsibility, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, to build a great company. Yeah. You know, we. No, I'm not denigrating that right, at all. I, I, I'm, I know, I'm I respecting know. it with great. I'm just thinking admiration. about the shareholders and the employees no, okay, and the but users. But beyond and, that, what's your responsibility to say? I, okay, we're creating this thing, and I want to make sure that it does what, and it doesn't do this, and it doesn't omit this, and yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we're we're on a, I, I you know, this is an overused metaphor, but you know, clearly this is one of those things that. I think in my lifetime, I'll look back and say, was there anything else as significant as this shift where uh, traditional, this shift? this shift of people getting information, commerce, and communications, where the powers are really shifting from the, the companies to the consumers, right? The consumers really have the ability 10, 20 years from now to be ultimately the ones in charge. And I think this shift is really profound, uh, and it's really, really going to be one of the few things in my lifetime that I think uh, is going to be as impactful. And I think that's the, that's the sense of, you know, pardon the, the sort of dramatics, but the, the sense of uh, um, uh, fate and, and, and the sense of destiny that we feel to, that, you know, if we don't take care of this opportunity and make it happen, we'll have missed out on one of the greatest paradigm shifts. Transforming in, yeah, paradigm, paradigm shifts. shifts in, 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 in our lifetime. I, I don't know about history, but well, you know, think about it. What else I only live once, so I. No, but I, you think know. about it. What, what, just think about this century. What else has been as transforming? The only other thing I would suspect that would come immediately, you would say, the atomic bomb, development of the atomic bomb, the development of automobile, mm -hmm. and the development of what? Well, you know, I think the you know we went through it's the transportation, right, yeah. and, the, and the industrial and transportation of moving moving physical goods back and forth and people back and forth and then you got into um, uh, the information business and this is sort of the transportation version of information business how do you move bits and bytes uh, in the most effective way in the most distributed way and the and most affordable way who worries about making it pervasive so that people are not left without access because of economics or regions or whatever I think that um, I think the private industry has to continue to play a role, and I think that um, you know this is a market-driven mechanism, so that we have to be careful that, that this yeah. isn't this isn't done for charity. Uh, but the government continues to to you know their effort to continue to wire the schools. I, I don't want to get into details how they actually right. do that, but the, perp the, the 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 purpose of using uh, the schools as a as a way of uh, allowing our next generation to be exposed to the to this kind of infrastructure is extremely important and and we look at it as okay as long as the the number of uh, users on the internet continue to have a large percentage of students that's a good sign because that's the next generation that's the generation that's really going to get all the benefits that we're trying to build today um, uh, the um, 
the, the, the educators out there, the libraries. And, you know, we, we work with a lot of groups to, to make sure that this is something that people can, in the communities themselves, uh, uh, whether it's through a kiosk or community centers, I think a lot of people are trying to say, hey, this is creating the next level playing ground uh, in terms of playing field, in terms of information access. And it's clear that the companies that, that can really take advantage of enabling that is going to be in a great advantage. And the populations that have access to it is going to be at a better, in better shape to compete as a country or as a region, as a community, than if you don't have it. Is part of the success of the company over the last two years, say, the fact is that you are not there with online management responsibilities, that you have some other title, you have someone that manages the company so you can think about where the company ought to go? Yeah, I mean, David and I are co-founders of the company that, uh, that uh, you know, we continue to be uh, people that try to contribute uh, in our way. But, you know, the company is really running, is being run by our CEO and chairman, Tim Kugel, and Jeff Mallett, our president and COO, and... And, 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 you know, some top executives have been with us for three years. Um, and that's something that I think we realized early on. Tim and, and Jeff joined us as early as 1995. So we really realized that in order for us to grow properly, we need to know, have people who know how to grow companies, um, who have gone through the startup experience and also run big enterprises, um, and continue to have those people being in charge. And, and our role really is to say, hey, how can we guide the company, not in a forceful or line management kind of way, but in a way that convinces our peers that this is the right thing to do or not. I mean, you know, half the ideas we come up with are bad. So, um, and, and that's, that's just the way we work. Uh, and, and it's really based on a team of people and, and really understanding how each other think and how each other really work to, to make that successful. But um, without the management team, we wouldn't be anywhere. It's great to have you on the program. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you very this much. Great. Jerry Yang from Yahoo. Back in a moment. Stay with us.